Hey everyone, welcome, this is Dieter. I wanted to show you my Astroneer safe where I built a, a little automation factory that creates the items for the holiday event. So let's go and take a look at that. So here are my own play shield, the spaceship. Here's the station where you guys uh, sent off the present for the cheers event. Let's take a look at what I did here. There's two rows of it, forget this row over here. That's my regular base, but my rover and all that stuff. There's two rows, they both start with the source interface, because that's the main source and um, how I build stuff. So the, the top row creates quartz that will be smelted down in the smelting furnace. And the smelting furnace typically deposits items on the left hand side. Unless the left hand is full, then it will start to press it over here. This is why I put this medium storage style over here. So that the furnace does not overflow to the right. And there's an auto arm, a counter auto arm with the quartz. There is that, there's currently no resource canisters, there are over here and no over. And we see them over there. Right, so the resource canisters come here. And let's take a look at those canisters real quick. They're called a breathing fluid and soil canister. So not a resource canister, a uh, fluid and soil canister. I tried putting hydrogen into them that work, that's really well. Um, and other than that, this is the soil collector with uh, RPG. Um, the best way that the game has, that's a little bit, just collecting soil. Um, so the first row here, that's the quartz. I like to position the, the soil canister here. Um, this thing will plop into the soil canister and it will start auto -flowing. Um The auto arm moves the quartz as it becomes available from the soil centrifuge over to the smelting furnace. When it deposits stuff here, it will smelting furnace will automatically move it to smelt it. And the smelting furnace is done and moves across the here. So the second row, same setup, just for resin. Right, so we have the auto arm here with the resin, um, and it's primed with the resin because of this situation that when the soil centrifuge runs out of soil, uh, it deposits the means soil canister over here, so that the auto arm can move it away and the it in. So I primed those two. This one makes resin, of course it makes eight resin, while this one makes four quarts. Um, that said, the auto arm positions the resin right here, and this printer is set to um, auto produce small, small canisters. But this is the auto produce button here. And it's easier to produce stuff, but it doesn't have any resin. So then the, the printer drops off the resin canisters over here. And what happens is that this auto arm will pick them up. Uh, and this auto arm is also found with a small canister, so it will only pick up small canisters. Because the problem is when the printer starts printing, the auto arm notices that the printer is in the area. We will drop this printer and throw it right into the medium shredder. Just like that. Good point. Um, so I can't put the canister here to avoid them. Then whenever you have two rows, right, you have the top row with the quartz and the bottom row with the resin, you somehow need to merge those two rows. So I was thinking of how I would do that, but I wasn't really quite sure how. So what I did here is I basically did a little triangle. So there's a cross, right? This um, auto arm will pick up um, glass. Right? And because the soil canisters will be here, deposited like in a huge pile, um, 
I didn't want to auto arm to pick up the soil canisters and deposit them over here on that storage side. Yet. So um, I planted the glass. And then this auto arm will pick up the uh, small canisters and throw them into the medium set. Uh, the medium set is not super fast, but it will get to the set. But you see here, the set will extend. Um, it, it just touches the trailer. And it works fine, it never fails putting it into the shredder. But if I walk here, the auto arm will give me a really small piece. You see here I will like clean my inventory. Um, there is a, a drill more tool, there is a um, oxygen tank in my little work life. That's about all that I have. But as I walk into the circle here, this auto arm will deposit things into my inventory. So then I have to cross, right? I, I get the stuff from here, so I need to somehow merge those two. And this is where the merge happens. Um, so this just sort of like the X and the Y axis, and they need to somehow come together. And that is this auto arm. But this auto arm, I also primed it with some um, scrap, but maybe I don't need to necessarily prime it with scrap. Uh, because auto arms cannot pick up, I mean, at least at the moment, they cannot pick up any medium sized object. They only move uh, small sized object. Um, so it, it won't pick up anything on this platform here. Um, the only thing that it can pick up is the, the shredding. Which you put on in here and see if it's good. Oh no, it doesn't accept it. Really, it doesn't accept it. It's so sad. No? So it, it comes out here, but it's not going to And then the, the auto arm just deposits here on, on this one. And again, to create the quality of the card, you need, you need um, definitely scrap and something else. Right? Let's see what else I can do. Um, so the, the automation. Um, one, which is the, the bluish robot, just needs scrap, and the, the bluish yellow robot just needs scrap. Um, then the cubic object, this one of the, the little wooden blocks with the, the grass in them, you need carbon. So you need a smelter, but there's no way out. You need the smelter over here um, if you want a higher level object. And then, oops, put this again. So you have the cubic object, and then the stellar object needs glass. So if I if I have to extract something and smelter it, I might as well do glass instead of carbon, right? And this one actually gives a decent return. Then of course, astronium, maybe in the future I will try astronium. I'll go down to the core, and then I should be able to find something there to make those little custom bottles. You guys can follow the content on, on YouTube, right? Um, it looks like a little snowball with a solar system. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right? Those, are, those are the things that, that you can do um, for the holiday event that you can print. Um, another thing with the photo, since I have this one already off of automation, I might as well uh, show you that you can now print um, some items that you used to be able to print on the back. Right? So in the backpack, it's like here. Uh, currently I have a pa packager active, but there's like a whole bunch of items that you can print off the backpack, but the problem is that that needs um, power. So if you if you are not standing to something, you will just lose power in your backpack, and you can print about like four or five items, and that, that's it, right? Then you will be out of power standing there in the dark. Um, if you're next to an RTG, like my, my little rover there, that works really great. Um, on, you know, the rover will continuously provide me with, with power, but it does take some time. Um, plus, you know, then I have the item in my backpack, uh, and, and somehow I need to put the item then up here, so that's, that's challenging, right? Um, I wanted something that is fully automated. I had versions before that, where, um, the, I did it manually. And even though I was clicking really fast, um, I wasn't as good as this little automation. I mean, this is almost nothing, right? This is like a couple of things, um, and it goes fast. Um, I will probably make another video where I show you guys how this thing produces 
um, I mean, like maybe 20, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, I sent like four or five of those off. It's pretty cool. So now the printer can print items that are um, usually printed in your back, uh, backpack, but not all the items, right? I wish it would print a drill mod. Not to drill for the rover, but the drill mod. It does. So currently it does. So here's the automation. Currently it doesn't work like that. It's cut. Right? So I need to be on silver or something like that. Uh, the small can of stories is what I need. I need to need resin. And just one resin, right? It's not too um, Actually, all the items on the, the backpack, um, I think, are uh, one item thing. So a packager. Um, I haven't tried to shred a packager yet. I wonder if that works. But it needs graphite, right? So out of the soil centrifuge, I would only get two graphite. Um, and I get a packager to, to shred. I'm not super sure how much scrap a packager will make. Uh, I mean, definitely the small canister does not give a whole lot of scrap, right? But it gives a decent amount of scrap. Uh, packager, I haven't looked this up. You can look it up on the Astropedia. Um, the hydrazine thruster, so I need steel and tungsten, so that's not happening because that's too different for planet. Uh, solid fuel thruster, thruster is aluminum and ammonium. So ammonium, the soil centrifuge will give me one. And aluminum, I need to buy. Um, or use scrap to buy it, right? So that's not happening. Um, and that is for my rope. That's not a backpack, right? Because it has, it has two things here. Um, Usually I'm not super sure if this can be printed on the backpack, but I've never, never used it. So really, there's not a whole lot of items that you can now print on the printer that come out not packaged. Right? The packager comes out not packaged, it's ready to go. Uh, I wonder if I have a package of this in there. I can go and uh, show you that this <laughs> Yeah. I, I used to have like a ton, just a ton of graphite because I was farming all of Glacier, everything in like the radius of one of, of these things um, in all directions is farmed out. That was my first attempt. Uh, I just used the rover and I used those two uh, towers here um, just to fill them up, bring them back to base, uh, make graphite out of the soil that I've collected and, and just make packages in my backpack like crazy. I actually used this printer here, that's not a new uh, printer I used this printer to uh, print uh, packages, but it did not work automatically out of one of those. Uh, this thing is called a living resource canopy. Uh, and this is the way it's not because it used to have uh, a um, and then I have like a whole bunch of others here. There was one with carbon because my manual thing used the steel. I showed it something with steel, I forget what it was. Oh, it was this little uh, camera. Let me see if I can show that. See the probe scanner? And the probe scanner just needs one steel, so I was creating steel like crazy. Um, printing those and shredding them. They give a lot of good stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, stuff, but um, it's manual. I right? can't do it out of, out of this printer here. So, where can we do So, where is the printer, right? And this printer is set to just print the sterile object, the glass and stuff. Okay. So, glass I get again out of the first row. Here's the little cross thing, right? It gets melted. It's deposited there and this other hand uh, gets the glass. It was trying to the glass and it ran out. There's no more. There's no more. Um, so this other arm picks it up from here. And then this soil centrifuge makes resin. Uh, this guy moves the resin from here to here. And it's it's really great because the soil centrifuge, um, when the soil canister is uh, uh, is connected to here, right? It cannot deposit anything here, it only can deposit it here. And it will wait for the auto arm to one by one take the little resins off and put them to the printer. And there's, I think something is bumped at the moment where, see, it's going to um, where it prints the canister super fast. 
I move much faster than you back back yeah. it, it takes like, I swear, maybe half a second. So it's it's just really the time that this thing, I don't know, it moves the resin from over here to here. And by the time it's like halfway, the arm is like about here, the, the canister is already taken. So I, I assume we're going to fix this problem here at some time. It's a little bit more the past. The, um, the stellar object prints normally. So it does take like four or five seconds to print. And then you see one here, right? Um, I also wanted to make sure, I, I guess I don't need anything here, but oh yeah, the printer, when the printer prints, uh, the auto arm will pull the printer because the printer is a small item, right? Even though it's a little bit here. here. Uh, it is a small item, it puts it into a single slot, so the auto arm will pull the printer off and like put it somewhere there. Right? So I just pump the auto arm with a stellar object here, and you guys see there's a bunch of stellar objects there, there's three available. Oh, and by the way, there's my little, there's the code. The farmer, because when I did the, the probe scanners, and I shredded the probe scanners, I needed some, some um, steel, right? So I have the auto extractor here. And it's pretty cool still. It was all the way to the top when I installed it, and I got a whole bunch of those resources. So one, I completely used up, and then uh, I kept collecting hematite here, and this one is full, and then I kept making iron here, this one is not super full, this one is full, oh no, this could be a little bit more, I mean it's full of the kind of things to do, the stuff on the inside, it's even like a little bit of a 3D effect, see there is like, a little bit of a CD effect, so I can keep you from look inside. It's kind of hard to see from the outside how, how cool this thing really is. So I'm going to have a second thing. So usually the windows, I don't know how many there are, a lot. Maybe 12 per, per one of these, but it's just not a lot for it, probably. It's still a little good to fill up the battery and it's just a good thing. And I used to have like a huge pile of research items here. And my very first auto arm was actually positioned somewhere here um, because I meant to take the research items and put them in into the research chamber. Uh, this is where I learned the auto arm doesn't be needed like this. <laughs> so there is that. Um, yeah, so that's that's the thing. Um, I, I have a whole bunch of stuff here because I used three of the soil canisters to make make resin and, and convert it into stock and only one of these salt canisters to make glass. And it's the ratio is a little bit out of whack. Um, not too much. As you see here out of four salt canisters I have a decent amount of stock left. Okay, um, there's maybe a couple of no no there's a couple of here. So um and you see here uh, this is where I start. So there's like a little bit of soil there. Um, and it works really, really well. I think it should be faster than when I was doing it with the probe scanner manually. When I was shredding the probe scanners manually and just like moving stuff around like crazy. Um, this does it faster, which is very, very impressive. So, um, you know, I need to collect some soil, otherwise I would have shown you today how this thing works. Um, but collecting soil is very boring, so I will do that some other time. Oh, here's some of the um, rewards that I have been getting. So, I have been getting a diamond. You see here, there's another diamond here. Because um, when you pull up one of those, those event pages, after you complete, right? I mean, you guys can see that. I have the pencil time. I don't know how to make this. Oh, and there's a knife here. Maybe it has something to put it away. You guys can see this a little bit better. Oh, right. Uh, I'm not super sure what this is supposed to be, to be honest. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can see that the visor is like not the standard color. Right? Obviously, it's over here. There you go. Right, so you can really see well the the hat icon. 
I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. I think it's a bow or something like that. But it's kind of present, so I'm a present. I always want to take myself to the present for the same number. Um, yeah, so once you fill it up, we can show you how this looks like. This is what it works. So, you see here that I have all the, the event items for it, right? So it does this thing here. Um, okay, this was bought in the last couple of days. Um, it, it always said less than one day. And then care package. I don't know what the care package is. Can I click on anything here? No, right? I usually can't click on anything, but just wanted to be sure. Um, and, you know, you fill up one of these things. I don't know how much it takes. A, a lot. I think 2,000. Um, and as you see, there's 290 on this thing, and there's three missing. So you can do the math. Um, and when you fill one of these up, I mean, so far nothing has happened except I got the following. I got the diamond. I got a silicone, which is really, really cool, right? Because you need to make silicone, you need nothing. And um, silicone you need for the um, medium gas storage. So I have a whole bunch of those um, already done and silver. Um, then it sends you a graphene, which is cool. Uh, is and then for some reason it sends you aluminum alloy. I guess aluminum alloy you use to make a work. Yeah, aluminum alloy. How many do you need? Two. Right, so that's great. Uh, it gives you that. Uh, what is the other thing? Oh yeah, the, the uh, gas texture. The gas texture. Uh, there's the medium fluid and soil. So fluid, I think, only really means hydrazine. There's no other fluids that aren't available. And the, the devs have already said there used to be water in the game, but a long time ago, before it was actually um, officially released, it wasn't beta. Um, yeah, so no, no fluids other than hydrazine that I'm aware of. And soil. Let me see. There's the medium gas chemistry, you see? You need glass and silicone. And silicone is not uh, Let's take a look here. Uh, the silicone. Glass is... Okay, a little bit of color is actually not a big deal. I mean, you do need copper. It's about it. So you need to have brought something from silver and copper to do this. Um... What is it? Oh, it is. It's another thing in silicone, see? You need resin and quartz, so no big deal, right? Both you can get from the soil synthesis, but you need methane, and I believe there's only two planets that don't have methane. So there's that. Let's give you a, a big overview. Actually, when I'm producing, I like to stand there because this entire thing is like running like mine. Um, and I just watch the pile of little canisters go up here. And then I make sure this usually fills up with grass faster than it fills up with scrap. So occasionally I can throttle these by just putting, turning those guys off. Right? Because the soil seems to be just real weight. Until um, both two items are on this part of the platform, then the soil centrifuge will start, start again. Right? So as long as there's one item in the soil centrifuge, it won't do anything to continue doing this thing. So again, let me, I don't know how to make like a bird's eye view to show you this. I would just run around and show you. Um, I had to move this a little bit closer because this robot arm was not really to position things in the back. Now it's clear. So you see it's a little bit out of the way. Um, I guess I can move these closer together, but I have them just aligned with my original base in the back. Okay? This was this first row here, the very top row, was for the original base. And then I had like a whole bunch of stuff here, see, I, I like to build off of this thing, uh, whatever, whatever that is called again, because this is like relatively flat, and then I just pull it all the way out here, and you see that it's not by important day, but right? you see some of the platforms, the old ones here, that I didn't need for this setup. So again, let's do like a bird's eye, which is 
there are two sources of this, top one, words, uh, middle one, and ready. The words, of course, need to be smarter. The words need to be printed. And then I have this little, I don't have to show this, maybe like this, this little cross thing, right? That the glass I'm picking up from this. And you probably can do um, okay with just having uh, a moving platform here, right? I just have those lines on it because we need a brochure and a pepper room is easy to do a brochure. Yeah, but thankfully they don't have monsters in the game, so let me do whatever noises there are. Um, unless you're standing next to an evil plan, it's not going to work here. So this guy uh, pulls the glass here, and this guy holds this one over here. Um, the, the canisters scratch them, and here's the diagonal. That's the connector. So I think the diagonal is the only one that, that really connects this cross here together. But it looks okay. Uh, I didn't have any problems. I do have uh, this furnace occasionally positioned a glass here. And then the robot can't leave it. The ro uh, robot arm can't leave it. You can leave most of the stuff over here. Um, so maybe I should put the medium stuff in there, right? Because I can't practically overthrow this to the robot moving it over there. Um, I don't want to move the robot closer because the, the um, remember the small canisters get printed super, super, super fast. Uh, so just use them, there's like a whole pile here. Um, I don't want to move it closer to make it feel the way. So um, I'll give you now a couple of shots how the setup is. Very straightforward. And it's surprising that it goes actually faster. Um, than me doing it manually. Okay. Let's see what else can I do. How the end is going to show you. And it's going to be good. Okay, we have one more and one over here. One more like this, and one more like that. So that's the pretty good idea of how it is so far. So this is my little simple automation. I didn't use any switches and stuff like that because I think the switches you need to in So I would need to go with the Fairlight from Victoria, Sivana, and there it goes. And then I would have to learn how this works. The other arm is pretty straightforward, but it gave me things. And I was able to just position them so that it works very well. Um, yeah, this one works really well. It just puts it here and then the printer stops it. This one does manage to put it here and this printer is able to print. Uh, it's kind of interesting that it can print in the structure. I'm happy about that. The packages didn't work. And this printer uh, pulls the stuff, glass and stuff from, from this one here. And it prints really well too. Occasionally something gets positioned here, you see there's one more blue. Okay. But since Anything that gets positioned here is either glass or scrap, I don't care because eventually the printer will use it up. So it doesn't matter to me. Alright, so let's get back into the spaceship. Oh, this is my, um, what is it called? Another rover, another large rover. I used to have uh, two of them, but because I have two of the uh, platforms there where I was collecting everything in like a one radius of, of these things and um, all the packages have been collected. You can clearly see here is one of my uh, right? yeah, that's one of my beacons. You can see there in the background. Uh, I don't know if that's your pretty view because I did set up with my beacon here. I did set up Oh, okay, I don't have the distance detail to like super high. I have it here. Because I've played this game now for, I don't know, since before it was released, and I'm not used to like seeing something super far away. It's just funky. So, um, this is much better, I think, 
collected. You know, it's like one of these plates with the holy Oh, let's go back to the showroom and throw it away. That was my little, uh, what is it called, the rover or something like that, I don't have anyone. I don't like the tractor, for the longest time I used the tractor, it's, it's a pain, but this thing is just really much, much faster. The video controls our view of everything, and maybe a little bit more of this contraption that I set up here. Right? So this is going to be it for now. Thank you everyone, you guys take care.